All right, so in this video, what we're gonna show you is how to use Boot P Server to actually set your IP address to your PowerFlex 525 drive. And just know we're gonna do this in the most streamlined process ever. So we're basically, you need to be connected to your actual uh, drive from your PC, directly connected, not through a switch, not through anything else, directly connected to, from your PC to your actual device, right? So this is going to be your PowerFlex 525. So as you see, we do not have any kind of power to our PowerFlex 525 drive right now, or we have power, but we don't have any IP address in it. So what we've done is we defaulted it to show this purpose. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and open up Boot P Server. We're gonna select our actual um, NIC, uh, the NIC card we wanna transmit the data through, right? So in my case, I have two IP or two ethernet cards. So on my, on my computer, so this is a virtual environment. So I'm gonna pick the first one and you may not see that, right? So what I'm gonna show you here is this is going to be where your boot P is, right? So this is boot P server. Again, this is uh, the version of boot P server we're running right now is 3.02. And uh, just so you, you know, there's all kind of different versions. Now um, we wanna look for the boot P version and this is the boot P of the type, right? So this is the how many times it's actually seen the device over here. We want to actually click this and create a relationship and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to type in our IP address. So we're going to put in 192.168.1.7 and now we, we're not quite finished yet, right? So we, we still, now Boot P Server has now established that IP address to that device, but we still have one more task to do. And this is going to be coming up and actually disabling Boot P. So actually coming up and doing this, you need to verify that you do have a connection, and you, which means you still do have a, a solid connection to your drive. In this case, my IP address is uh, in line with that specific device. So if I come over here and show you that, it's actually showing that my IP address is 192.168.1.7. Um, yeah, so in that case, it's 100% in line. So if I come over here and do this, now I can come over here and make sure you're highlighted, come over here and disable. Now when I click disable, it disabled the boot P command. It sent a command to that actual device to disable it. Now, what I will show you too is we're completely done with the boot P server right now. But, so you don't have to save anything, you don't have to do anything. What I wanna show you is another key factor that you need to know. So even though now we're seeing it in RS links and we have it populated and the device has an IP address, we still need to power cycle the drive. So the PowerFlex 525 drive requires a power cycle to make sure the IP address stays with that. Anytime IP address is changed on a PowerFlex drive, um, specifically on a PowerFlex 525 drive, you do need to actually power down and power cycle that drive. So you can do that many, two different ways. Um, connected components is one way I would like to come in here and show you that you can easily come over here and go and we'll open that up and we'll discover it real quick and what we'll do is we'll come over here and retain values come over here to parameters and we'll go to parameter 53 which is right here and we want to power cycle the drive right so you can power cycle and you can do that you can also come in and if you wanted to, you can parameter reset, you can do whatever, uh, you can module reset. Uh, in this case, you know, you come in here and, and do that as well. Um, but power reset, the factor reset is not what you wanna do. Module reset is completely fine as well. So that module reset, what it's gonna do is completely reset the module so you, and then you're gonna lose connection when you do a complete module reset. So that's when you would still need to go back. I just wanted to show you that. Because when you when you're if you do the wrong one, you're gonna lose connection right here, and then it's gonna come back, right? So that's uh, that's doing the module reset. So if we go down to, to these three right here, are are actually four, four or five commands. You have your ready, you have your parameter reset, you have your factory reset, you have your uh, power reset, and you have your module reset. We did a power reset and we did a module reset. So now our IP address should be in the actual device, which it is. If we come over here, now we can right click and go to module def, uh, configuration. Module configuration should show now that it's in static 
and not dynamic. So not DHCP, it's in static. Now if you would have visited this before you did a power reset, then you could have actually came in uh, and it would have shown that it's still in DHCP, which it was still would have been because it did not take the IP address at that point. Now, what I will like to show you too is you could have just simply just powered down the drive, right? You didn't have to go through CCW or nothing like that, but I want to give you a, a couple different options you can do to help you and better your, your troubleshooting and stuff like that uh, when you're going through using this drive. So um, you could have just did the simple route of cycling the power on the drive by pulling the fuses or uh, disconnecting power, however you have it wired up. But again, when it comes out to it, this is a simple and easy way to set your IP address to your drive. So make sure you don't do this through a switch because you want to have direct connection to make sure boot P server can see that MAC address and see it really easy. All right. So with all that said, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys on the next one.